Today is Wednesday, February 5th, 2020, and I'm wearing my Pine Watch for this introductory Pine Phone unboxing. So I got called out last time for not having a proper knife, and uh, you know, the most dangerous tool in the shop is a dull knife, uh, especially a serrated dull knife. And so you know what I'm going to be doing? I'm going to be using an X-Acto blade. First thing you'll notice is that this is uh, marked as a gift to uh, Pine Phone Braveheart purchasers. And in the fine print down yonder at the bottom, it says, Remarks, one Pine Phone BH, PB Pro NVME, because uh, I ordered an NVM thing. Development and field test sample do not store re no retail value. So very interesting. It's, uh, it's a gift from the Pine people. All right, so we're gonna give it open. Let's find the right, the right edge. So this is, contains a Pine Phone and hopefully a circuit board for my Pine Buck Pro. There we go. The sharpest thing in the shop. Certainly not me. All right, so there's my, my NVMe adapter. I'll open that first to prolong your anticipation of the Pine Phone. Because you don't actually want to see the NVMe adapter that you could buy for like, I don't know, less than $15. So it's got some screws. It's got a cord. It's got a anti-static. All right, well, it looks like looks like an adapter, and you put it in a pine book. But that's not why you're here. You're here because of the pine book, pine phone, the pine phone. Isn't that a beautiful box? Like, are they trying to be Apple? No, they're trying to be a pine cone. All right, so we have... I don't know if that's important. That's why I'm covering it with the finger. We have a Pine phone with the Pine 64. It's got a 2800 milliamp battery in it. It supports all of those different frequencies. And we're going to try it with Verizon. All right. So here's the here's the unboxing, the actual Oh yes. It's got that nice nice stickivity, a nice uh, foaminess. Oh, a, a wonderful welcome letter, which I won't read in its entirety, but it basically says, congratulations, uh, you're the first to get a Pine phone. So I'm, I'm feeling very special, very blessed. I pre-ordered this back in November uh, around there, uh, and it, it just finally arrived after uh, weeks of, of anticipation and, and then at least two weeks almost of being alerted that it was being shipped, and now it's actually here. All right. Uh, join the conversation wherever you feel like uh, the Braveheart phones come preloaded with factory test software and nothing else. Oh, wow. So I'll just have to do my own operating system, one of the four. Uh, most mobile distribution OSs are linked on the Pine phone subsection of the Pine 64 wiki. Uh, there's schematics, hardware configs, other useful information. Um this is meant for early adopters, folks. If you think that you're going to have uh, a wonderful iPhone experience out of the box, your your expectations may need to be altered to be aligned with this product. All right. Let's take a look at the actual hardware. It's got like these little things so you can grab, grab it from here, yonder, and yonder. I'm going to go ahead and go at it. Oh, well, there's the back side of it. Yonder and yonder doth not doeth. All right. So it comes with... Uh, these bags from China are always uh, quite interesting. They have like a soft touch to them. So this is a Schwancy red USB-C charge cable. 
uh, and I'll be using my own adapter. Very nice, decent length. And then uh, let's go ahead and, and pull it out of the sheath. This feels very schmick, and that's that's a technical term. So it has a glass screen cover on it. I'm going to leave it on because I'm like an old man. It has a nice, nice even weight distribution, and it's got the same feel, very nice feel on the back, uh, like a magnesium. Man, that they did a great job on this. People are going to like, what type of phone is that? Headphone jack on the top. It's got the camera and a, and a um, flashlight and the logo. On the side, we've got a big button, another small button. USB-C on the bottom with the uh, microphone, I'm assuming. And then uh, nothing on the side, on that side. So where is the SIM card go? Uh... Oh, it looks like right on the very bottom, there's this little this little corner here. It's a little hard to see. Can we focus? Lock the focus as well, potentially. Come on. You just have to trust me. There's a place to put your finger in here. And I believe the back. Oh, yes, it does. Oh, this is pla a plastic back. Plastic back. Move, go. Focus. But it's got a very nice finish to it. I'm just going to, there, slowly work my way around. Hopefully without breaking anything. Because it would be a shame to break a brand new device. I'm kind of afraid to pull up the whole top. Where's the, um, there's a, there's a speaker grill across the bottom here, and it looks like there is an actual speaker located right there. That looks like antenna bits. You can just see the battery and its custom uh, ness, customness. I'm just trying to get this end off here. And I'm afraid that it might be for the brave at heart only. I'm a little concerned that I, I won't be able to uh, easily... Oh. We've committed a fatal sin, I'm sure, but I'm not sure what it would be. All right, so there it is. So, oh, I'm talking to you on the device that has the SIM card in it. Hold on, let me pause and remove my SIM card. Got my SIM card, got it ready. Why don't we just take a ganda at all the accoutrema that are available. So we've got this big, huge chip right here. No idea what it does. It does all the magic bits. Uh, can we get some some deets? So it's a Qualtel, Anatel, RTI QE G19. I'll have to look that one up. It's uh, a package. And then over here, we have some dip switches which appear like it gives us some options for turning things off and back on we've got modem wi-fi bluetooth microphone rear camera front camera and headphone disablement uh we've got this pogo pin style uh device thing uh, and that's i guess it's probably likely a um in circuit programmer of some sort uh some kind of header for programming uh, and then uh, TF and SD card slots right here, and it appears that the TF goes on top and the uh, SIM card goes on the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and um, remove the 2800 milliamp battery just by uh, pulling up from the bottom. Here's the battery. Rated capacity, 2800 milliamp. Typical, 3,000, 3.8 volt. Don't short circuit, made in China. We'll stick in my SIM card for Verizon. No idea if that's going to work. Um, oh, a little reset button there. 
these are all antennas around the sides here. All these funky looking dingly doppers. Uh, those are the, the buttons we saw on the left hand side, the volume up and down and likely the power. A lot of the weight is in this battery. All right, let's uh, let's put this back together. Oh, SIM card. You need to be properly seated. Did you properly seat in the right seat? That doesn't look like it, it goes in there. It's very funny looking. Do I have the wrong size SIM card? That would suck. I'm gonna pause. Yep. Over on the wiki, it's a micro SIM and I have a nano SIM. I guess I'll have to 3D print an adapter. Shout out to Morden on Thingiverse. I've got uh, my Ender 3 ready to print. Oh, we're gonna print in gray today, I guess. From Solutech. Oh, that's not very much. I guess that's it. Not very much material, and hopefully it doesn't get stuck in there. It's got these little tines that gave me a little bit of a an issue when I was trying to pull it back out. You see how uh, they're forcing facing one direction, but they engage on the... Uh, where do they engage? There's four pins, and it goes in like that. Well, we'll just have to give it a try and see if it works. Should work just fine, right? All right, great, it fits. Let's put it back together now. Oh, there's some tape on here, preventing this device from turning on in transit. So let's, uh, actually that was probably in a great spot to be able to just fold it. No, it was not. Let's just put that in and turn it on. So let's see what kind of test software they have included for us. Come on, buddy. Maybe it really is just uh, test software. Literally nothing to see. Only for the brave. Is there any other buttons that I'm missing? How do we even flash it? Turn it on. I saw one green light flash. Oh, green RGB postmark OS, postmark it. Oh, <laughs> yep. Um, all right. So let's automatic tests. It's testing all the things. The math processor, the LIS 3 MDL, the STK 335, the RTL, the EG, the OV, the GC. They all passed. Um, I don't have a headphone. Now I've put it into test mode for the headphone without a headphone plugged in. Sure. Front, left, front, left, front, left, front, left. Well, it's front, on the back. Left. Yes, front, left. Oh, it's vibrating. Yes. The RGB LED, does it RGB? It certainly does. Does the modem work? Connecting, connected. IME, QDOM, stuff. Connected to modem, loading the things. Loading into, loading info. I got it to work. 
Yes! And it looks like the test software has already had an interesting test malfunction. Is it's fudged off to the right. Let's turn it off. Turn it back on again. Got the flishity flash. You should see the test something or other. Or not. We're going to have to figure out how to flash this device. But is that enough to satiate you iPhone touting Android hating pine cone people? You know what it looks like? You know what a brave heart experience feels like? You've got to actually get down and dirty with your hardware. Can't just pull it out of the box and start using it. You're going to have to actually do some some uh some thinking. So this it's a gorgeous piece of technology that is just waiting for the right software developers to uh, make it into a thing that you could buy at Walmart, you know? I'm excited. I was brave enough to buy it. Are you brave enough to follow suit? The Pine Phone. Coming to a mailbox near you. Subscribe.